this is their home, we welcome them. But the moment I stopped, the moment I paused, look at that. Daddy, is that you? Look at my goosebumps, my hair standing on end. Was that you? You saying this isn't over? <gasps> no way, dude! No! Okay, you're not welcome. You gotta leave. That is fucking insane, guys. Can you believe that? <laughs> Are you proud that you killed all those people? Oh my god! No! What the hell? And I just... Would you kill again if you were given the chance? Oh my god! No fucking way! Oh my god, this dude is really evil, man! Um... Will you follow me? If I wanna meet you? <laughs> How's it going everybody? Colin here from the Paranormal Files. Tonight we are here in Mauston, Wisconsin. Kind of like Boston, kind of like Austin. This is Mauston. This is a very historic town, very small here in Wisconsin, but behind me, this is a notorious home in the area, the Borman House. Now, this is a home that was built a very long time ago, and we've already done the interviews and everything. So, uh, yeah, I guess let's just cut right into the episode. We already have had some stuff happen to us. Let's go to that footage from the beginning of the investigation now, because then after you see these clips of the interviews, I'm going to get into some theories that I have that are very interesting. You rolling? Uh-huh. Okay, go for it. All right, I'm Rose Clark, the volunteer historian for the Juneau County Historical Society, and of course, uh, the headquarters of the society is the Borman House in Boston. Uh, ben Borman that built this house in 1876 owned the rights to the power on the dam over here on the Lemonware River. Ben Borman had a three-story flour mill, sold flour all over the Midwest, and a lumber mill. The woodwork in this house was the finest lumber that came through his mill. And then Ben Borman discovered that there was people making money off carding wool because there was a lot of sheep in the area. So he started a third mill, which was wool carding. Well, Ben uh, owned actually at one time most of the north side of the Lemonware River in Mauston. He talked about building a, a big house. And uh, one day, somebody was coming across the, the bridge right over here, and Ben Bourbon was coming from town. The man met him and said, if you're gonna build that big house, Ben, start it now. I'm sick of hearing about it. Well, this is the big house that he built. And uh, Ben Borman was married to a, a beautiful, wonderful lady, Elizabeth Gregg, and uh, they had three children. And Elizabeth uh, died of consumption in her 30s. In, uh, within a couple years, he remarried his brother's wife's sister. 
she lived in Boston. And then he, they had uh, two children. One died young and the other, uh, a man, died in Minnesota when he was about 75. So the kitchen of the house, the room we're standing in, um, probably looked very much like it does today. We, every, almost everything in the house has been donated and we try to get period items like the cook stove. We have these beautiful cupboards here uh, uh, it's not called a dumbwaiter because it doesn't go down into the basement or it doesn't go through to the other side where the uh, dining room is, so they can't set the food in here for people to, for the maid to pick up in the dining room. And over to our, uh, back here, this was the maid's room. and. Uh, in larger homes built during that area, larger than this home, which is quite large, um, oftentimes there was an addition onto one side of the house that was the servant's or the maid's quarters uh, because the maid would probably do the mending for the house. And uh, we did have a spinning wheel in there. She, I think that's been moved. Awesome. <laughs> All right, we move on here. Now this room, the bathroom, is not or original to the house. Nothing in it is original. However, the Bormans had running water in their house because they had their own generator. The dining room, um, you can see the other side of the cupboard. And the nicer dishes are in here, which differs from those that are in the kitchen. Now there's a wainscoting on the bottom quarter of the room, and the wainscoting is from Ben Borman's uh, lumber mill. It, it was part of his mill. And when the part of the mill, year, many, many years after he built it, it Part of it was destroyed by fire, but they did salvage enough to make, put the wainscoting in here. The light fixtures are not original to the house, but they are original to some of the older buildings in Boston. So they have meaning. Um, we do have a list of where they came from, but they were historic buildings in Boston is where they came from. All right, we'll move on to the second parlor. Now there are three marble fireplaces in the house. The marble came from Italy. And by the way, this house cost $12,000 to build, including three marble fireplaces and everything. So nowadays you couldn't built one marble fireplace or the double doors for 12,000. Times have changed. The man up here is uh, Charles Cutler. He was the first Juno County clerk. He was a clerk for 30 some years and from all indication he was a wonderful man, well liked by people. He never married. Uh, now Juno County one of the township is named after Charles Cutler. And some of our uh, pictures around uh, on the walls, some of them were not really relevant to the history of Juno County. However, the pictures were good and the frames were nice when they were donated, so that's why. <laughs> the pride and joy of our society is a candy case from a 105-year-old grocery store in New Lisbon. And there's 32 compartments. And any child that grew up in New Lisbon could remember if they had a few pennies. It was all penny candy. It took a long time to decide how to spend those pennies. 
and uh, the table when we went to the home for the family to show this case to us and decide if we wanted it, which we knew right away we did. It was sitting on this table and the table was painted gray and it was from the first owner of the grocery store. This is a hammered dulcimer. Uh, would you like me to raise it up? So? Sure. Okay. Like I say, all these items have been donated. And uh, yeah, I guess, anyway. That's what a hammer dulcimer sounds like. It's like a guitar in that it has to be tuned uh, every time it's played. Wow. And we are uh, getting someone that can play it for some of our events. That is a very creepy noise when it's yeah, out it tune. <laughs> and and there, the dulcimers, like uh, Mother Maybelle Carter, Johnny Cash's mother-in-law, she played the dulcimer, but it was uh, one that uh, she held in her arm like a guitar. Hmm. In here, we have the sunroom uh, or solarium back when this house was built, many, many people were dying of consumption. There was no cure, but uh, the doctors, and uh, they believed that sunshine and rest enabled the people to live longer. But so many young people, especially young women in their teens or early 20s, died of consumption. So back uh, in the days that this home was built, this was might have been referred to as the TB room. See, the person could rest in the sunshine all year round on a sunny day would make this a wonderful room to be in. Did anyone in the family die from TB? Uh, yes, but, uh, but uh, Mrs., uh, the first Mrs. Borman died of consumption, but of course that was the first before the house was built. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but the second, uh, Mrs. Borman, she lived uh, quite a few years past her husband. Uh, ben really died of consumption a few years later, something that he suffered from for a number of years. At first they thought that maybe because he was a miller, you know, the grain mill was so dusty, that that was the number one cause. And he did go back to England for a few months uh, during the year thinking that would be good for him. But, you know, London weather is... Uh, it, anyway, he died. Uh, oh, it was not uh, 10 years, less than 10 years after the house was built. And uh, I guess he died of consumption according to, to what the history write-ups say. Uh, there wasn't a lot of emphasis on what he died from because he had been ill for quite a few uh, years. But he didn't die in here, did no, he? No, uh, I'm not sure. Interesting. <laughs> Beautiful doors, the finest wood that w came from Ben Borman's mill are part of these doors. Three different kind of wood. These were included in that $12,000. <laughs> Price tag. <laughs> okay, a grand piano uh, made in Massachusetts. Uh, the wedding dress belonged uh, was worn by Ben Borman's daughter, and uh, it's been exposed to the air <laughs> quite too much, and it doesn't look so good. But at least we we can get the style of it, and. Uh, this was a little gown that was uh, made by Ben Borman's first wife for the first baby. Uh, the first baby was a boy, Will. And he ended up uh, moving to Australia. Over here we have the first Mrs. Uh, Borman, Elizabeth, the one that died before the house was built. Uh, then over here is Ben Borman. We uh, have had 
a number of descendants from out west here. No longer are there any descendants in Wisconsin, but uh, there are some that have been here from California, uh, Oregon, and Washington. And they love the house. <laughs> and they love the fact that we're taking care of it. And another marble fireplace. And by the way, the rocking horse did belong to the uh, Borman children. Um, we, we do have about a dozen items that were sent to us by the family. Uh, over here, uh, this is a melodeon. It's kind of like a, a keyboard uh, that we might have to see today. And the first Mrs. Borman, uh, play, uh, she owned this, and she played it when Ben Borman was courting her. <laughs> so it's, I think you have to pump it something like a pump organ. <laughs> And this, okay, we have uh, the families of Ben Borman, the descendants from out in Oregon, have had copies made of the original letters that Ben wrote to his little daughter when he went over to England uh, for a few months. It's just precious. We. Love the entrance, especially the staircase. Mm. We have had weddings in the house. We've had prom pictures. Uh, we have had many more wedding pictures than actual weddings because the people in Juneau County know this wonderful staircase is great. Uh, the niches where the lamps are uh, in some of the homes, the large homes throughout the United States, probably the world, sometimes they're called coffin corners or lamp niches. We've experimented and discovered that if the lights are all off and the lamps are lit, we would try with a kerosene lamp, if they're lit, it does light the entire stairway. And then we wondered why they called them coffin corners. People back in the 1800s and early 1900s, they would often pass away in their upstairs bedroom, and they often were uh, not taken to the funeral home, but they were prepared to, for burial in their bedroom. And then <clears throat> they would be put in the coffin. Well, they find that in a, with a stairway like this, it was very hard to get it down the stairs. But we've experimented with coffins too, and we know it works. <laughs> so it makes it, enables <laughs> them to turn the corner. I can imagine it'd be easier. <laughs> Just to, yeah. <laughs> we said, why don't they carry him down there? The archives of the historical society. We know uh, it was probably Ben Borman's bedroom. All right, uh, this was Ben Borman's office. We call it our library, and that's the third marble fireplace. And we have three pump organs in the house. <laughs> no, take that back, two. We didn't intend to have two but the second organ, the lady had it in her will that we would get it. And so when we went to the house to um, check it out, it was a nice organ, so we found room in the hall for it. <laughs> and it, when we have our open house, there's usually a lady or two that can play the pump organ. <laughs> Over here we have a picture that hung down in the um, Wisconsin Capitol in Madison. Um, Orland S. Loomis was elected governor of uh, Wisconsin in about 1942. Uh, but Mr. Loomis contacted pneumonia and he was very ill for a few days. He died before he was inaugurated. But this was a picture that hung down in the Capitol 
in his office uh, when he was the Wisconsin Attorney, Attorney General. All right, did you want to go upstairs? Sure. Okay. Let's okay. do it. Oh, by the way, uh, we are on the National Register of Historic Places, and we have a plaque out in front. Now, this house was made into apartments, four apartments, four different families uh, could have lived, did live in this house. Uh, in the 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, but they didn't ruin the woodwork. But if we have visitors that live, ever lived in this house, the kids all remember the staircase. Uh, the first room we go into will be the hospital auxiliary room. The hospital in Boston uh, is called the Hess Memorial Hospital. And the picture, the five pictures of the same, Dr. Hess Sr., the hospital is named after him and his son, Dr. Hess Jr. Doctor, when we first purchased this uh, building, um, Dr. Hess Jr.'s wife, who was a retired nurse, she would come up every year and make, wash the bedding in this hospital bed, and she'd bring it back up and made the bed like a good nurse should. Well, uh, a typical uh, nurse's uniform from probably the 20s and 30s, and that and of course, they would all have a nurse's cap. <laughs> the cases here hold uh, some of the uh, tools from, uh, real tools from a doctor's office. This was Dr. Hess Jr.'s desk. This was a famous lawyer and, well, famous, well-known in Juno County. We have the boutique have to have a place for these clothes that we get donated. Some are just really unique, like this little, little sailor suit and his little cap, <laughs> and a picture that the family donated. And when he, he passed away, he was in his 80s last year or so, and we took this stand with the picture in the little suit. Uh, and put it up near the casket, and his family loved it. <laughs> One thing we have a problem with in this house is a bird. Birds, usually one at a time, get in the house. And we haven't been able to figure out if we know it's not through the chimney, because they're all closed off. But it seemed like it always gets in in this bedroom and flies to this bedroom trying to get out. Mm -hmm. Now here is one indication, the only indication that the room was, uh, the house was made into apartments, is this archway um, doorway. Because the people had these two rooms and uh, I guess there was probably a regular wooden door here and they just wanted the archway. So that was the one change in the house. The people years ago, way back, didn't waste a thing. Now here's a wreath made out of human hair. When the, the ladies would brush their hair, they would save that human hair. And now uh, it looks like there's some tatting, a type of needlework tatting that goes on there. And if you look behind you, there's another smaller uh, a picture made out of hair. <laughs> and of course, this is a more recent, probably from only 40 years ago, with real human hair. <laughs> Interesting. Uh -huh. Here we have a display of uh, the first couple in Juno County in Boston. And if you notice, his hair, his daughter's hair, his grandchildren's hair. 
they had thick hair. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, uh, this is her great-grandparents, and she's still alive. She lives in Phoenix, and she's about 93 now. She's been here twice. Okay, this is Mary Troy's room. You see another wonderful closet. When we were in the library downstairs, I mentioned Orlin Loomis was elected governor. This is or Orlin Loomis's grandparents. Uh, Mary Troy was the first secretary of the Historical Society, uh, starting about uh, 1960. She was uh, had never married, and she had inherited a lot of money from an aunt and uncle over the years. The l uncle was a lumber baron, and the aunt was a handicapped lady that lived with Mary. Mary was a school teacher, but she didn't make her money teaching school. <laughs> anyway, she made her papers out long before she uh, developed Alzheimer's. And about the week that this house was for sale, Mary uh, had passed away and her will came out that we, uh, the Historical Society was getting enough we could buy the house. And the owner uh, lived in the house with his mother at that time. And then he married uh, during, uh, he was probably in his 40s, and his wife did not want anything to do with the house. So he, they moved to Georgia, sold the house to us for a good, decent price. He wanted us, that's society to have it. So, there, and we were able to go to Mary Troy's uh, home in Boston and pick out uh, and really anything we wanted. So they picked out her bedroom set. <laughs> and this is a picture of Mary Troy's, uh, the family farm that she, her parents owned. Down here, the ballroom of the house. I wondered why they would have a ballroom or a party room upstairs when it's so cold in the winter and so hot in the summer. But uh, I was going through the first state capital governor's mansion out in California. It was next to this first state capital. And uh, they had a ballroom upstairs. And the curator said it's because if they had a house elegant enough to have a ballroom, they would want the people to come through the house downstairs and see the downstairs, and then come through and see the upstairs. <laughs> Over here, watch your step. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the Bormans did not have a schoolroom in their house. Years back, some of our young, younger members uh, visualized this storage loft as a replica of a one-room schoolhouse. And this is about the size of a one-room schoolhouse. <laughs> and sometimes they would have as many as 30, 40 <laughs> children. But that's the way it was. <laughs> The basement. I when the society purchased this house, there was a sunken furnace in here that didn't work. So it was sunken probably three feet down. So anyway, that's why this newly cemented well it's not newly, it's been re-cemented years ago. Oh, old farm equipment. This would be, they could sharpen the blades. And I grew up on a farm and we had to, you know, and so we thought anybody could sit down and sharpen the blade was <laughs> pretty lucky. <laughs> this is a butter churn treadmill. Um, it would be powered 
by a large dog or a goat. The cream would be in here and the pulley would be attached so that the dog would <laughs> or goat would do the work. Wow. Then over here we have items from a beauty shop and uh, you can see that these permanent wave machines kind of look like an electric chair mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, they see the metal would get hot and uh, once in a while people would get their head scorched <laughs> that's why we don't have well, <laughs> machines like that. It is a that. creepy looking machine. Yeah they are. <laughs> And this is a cream separator, you know, the, pour the milk in and the cream would come out here and the skim milk was over here. And back when I was on the farm, the skim milk was fed to the pigs. Hmm. People didn't drink skim milk. <laughs> Our hospitality room is kind of crowded. We've just got some new cupboards donated. We haven't got them put away yet. Put up here. This is 50 years of real estate tax records for Juneau County. Over here we have a two-ton safe that was donated from the Odd Fellows. The Odd Fellows, of course, disband in most places. They phased out and they had to get the safe out of the building. It weighs two ton. So they donated it. We had a hard time finding someone that could move it, but finally they found a lumber company in town could move it. And the floor is cement down here under the carpet. Probably the only room in the house that we could store it. Mm -hmm. One thing nice about the uh, receiving a safe, we have the charter uh, members for the, like the first 50 years of the Odd Fellows. We've got their name, their age, their occupation. It, that's real special to have them. There's another Loomis sign. A few other things. Here's a picture of Mr. Loomis. And then the newspaper article declaring that he died of that before he was inaugurated. Wow. So. Awesome. Well, I think I'm good. I'm almost out of camera battery. For <laughs> well, maybe I... <laughs> no, you did yeah, awesome. Yeah, that, that was amazing. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the door. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dawn Logan. I'm on the Board of Directors for the Juneau County Historical Society. And I'm going to update you on a little bit of uh, paranormal investigation issues that have happened where we've had different individuals, mediums, and investigators uh, discovering some of our possible spirit residents. On this stairwell here, there was a young man seen, um, a young man, uh, we believe it was Greg Hall Borman, who was at the time probably about four years old, wearing old time plaid shirt and old time pants. And again, you know, he's a little guy, kind of shy, and he was uh, videotaped actually, kind of a shadow, peeking around the corner here. And one of the investigators, who I believe is a sensitive, actually saw him more in a, a 3D form with color, perceived that he was quite shy and didn't really want to interact, but he was curious. Also in this hallway, again, uh, our original owners were, you know, it was Ben Borman, but technically Elizabeth died prior to this ho the house being completed. A recording had a lady with a slight English accent, but very proper English, ask, you're not gonna make us leave, are you? And uh, the guess was that that likely was Elizabeth. There was a discussion about the house, and after we heard that recording, we made sure to take heed that uh, we wanted to assure everybody of the spirits that we appreciated being able to use their home and their house and absolutely no, we did not want them to leave. This is their home. We welcome them and we just appreciate them allowing us to be here. Uh, as far as actual visual on Elizabeth, it was uh, no visual or shadow 
strictly a voice. If we walk down the hall. Just follow you, to lead the way. Um, this main hallway, again, uh, Rose would have described how uh, this was his original office in here. And, you know, how it was set up, we, we only guess. There was a recording of two gentlemen talking. And again, this would have been more a residual as opposed to an actual interactive discussion. But you could hear two men talking, and one which we would perceive as Ben Borman saying that a particular occurrence was in a town known as Linden Station. And again, you know, there wasn't, there was sounds of voices. Again, you can imagine the business that took place in his office. Other detail, we couldn't understand the words, just in that town known as Linden Station. So uh, again, this was his office area. And Rose would have told you about some of the uh, original Borman artifacts. Uh, as far as direct interaction or reaction of any spirits with those items, I can't say that anybody's actually recorded that. In the room down this direction, again, we'll duck across through the main greeting room. In uh, this particular room, we were uh, set up in a kind of a circle, and we had flashlights on this particular table. And we believe we were talking to a 16-year-old Rob Roy. Rob Roy would have been the second child of Ben and Margaret Borman, who was his second wife. And he was discussing, again, we had one of the devices that printed out words, like a dictionary, and we had flashlights for the yes-no. And we found out that he liked to hunt with his uncle's dog, particularly turkey hunting and that he was going to be having a birthday soon. The month we were doing this was in August, and I've been trying to get record of his date of birth, which I haven't been able to, but I would have been really curious, you know, comparing what he was describing as having a birthday in August and to see if he actually had that birthday. But he did say his name was Rob Roy. Uh, so that, that occurred in this room. We didn't have like a Bugsy box or anything where we'd hear the voice, but it was flashlight communication and using one of those little dictionary things that would print out words. So that way we could get more than yes, no. And uh, when we first started, before we did, had uh, narrowed it down to being Rob Roy, we had asked somebody what type of vehicle they traveled in, and we were told that they had a car. So again, now when did the first cars come into town, all that type of thing, I'm not sure exactly. Interesting. So, but that, that conversation occurred in this room. Oh, the other thing that was interesting is uh, when we first started recording, and this was before we got into the flashlight things, we had a lady say, hello, I'm Ethel. Well, interestingly enough, Ethel Hess was married to the Dr. Hess Jr. And her nursing uniform is actually up in the Hess room, the medical room upstairs. And she had spent a lot of time here at the Borman House and had been an active member. Uh, now it's been several years since she has passed. Prior to her passing, she never would write out her experience as being a doctor's wife. It wasn't easy for her because her husband, well, he had some bad behaviors, including liking a little bit of alcohol. But times were rough. I mean, the, the guys going out on, you know, in whatever rustic vehicle he had or horse and buggy, going out to see people at their homes wasn't home much. So her life as a doctor's wife was not exactly pleasant. So I, she basically says, history is past. And I'm not going to talk about it. But that's this area. Then the next area that uh, we can look at is up by the ballroom. Okay. So. Want to head up there? Yeah. There is a, a regular, rather salty character, Daddy Salter. Did she tell you anything about the Daddy Salter no. stone? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if there was a dark part of the house, 
So down the base of this step, a lot of times not that much is told about Daddy Salter, but Hell's Delight was the name of his bar and store. Hell's Delight? Yes, <laughs> yes. And uh, I don't know if, uh, if you have a chance to read the story. Bottom line is his wife, he believes, was killed by the Indians. And as a result, he decided to punish them. You know, he felt it was the Indians responsible. And uh, people have recorded uh, his response. Mediums have sensed his presence and said that he was a little bit edgy, but I think he likes to have his story told. So, but this was the marker from his bar. Right, and that had been out in the country for a long period of time. And uh, I'm not sure at what point it was transported here. Obviously, it was sometime after 1987. Wow. When the historical society moved here. So that's they think that he, he is likely, around this marker because he, of the marker? I, I'm sure. I'm sure that's probably what, what his legacy is. There are Salters still alive and living in the area. And uh, I know when we first moved here, my husband actually had some of the Salter relatives <laughs> in his practice. Wow. But... Um, Oh, that's... <laughs> I just put my arm right in a big spider web. <laughs> oh, well, we're just decorating for Halloween. Yeah, right. <laughs> but if you had a relative or a spouse or somebody significant killed and you perceived it was by the Indians, there's an axe that's got to be ground. And whether or not he was able to ever find out who actually had murdered his wife and if justice or due diligence had been done to the particular culprit, uh, we may never know. Interesting. But his spirit and presence is here. And you said that's, if there's anywhere dark here, it's going to be yeah. this area because yeah. of the kind of anger. Yeah, the anger and the edginess. And so what what have people experienced, I guess? What what would lead, is it just the, the psychic's feeling? Uh, more the psychic's feelings. He's, but when we've had mediums here, they said that he would really like to dominate a conversation. And I think he's got a lot he'd like to express and to say. Hmm. But because of this being his legacy, the Hell's Delight Stone, um, I, we believe that's why his presence is here. And again, we do post the Hell's Delight marker and some of the history of Daddy Salter. I walked by this, I didn't actually read it. I thought it looked almost like a tombstone. So it's yeah, that, that was uh, Hell's Delight was the marker that was by his uh, business. Wow. <laughs> So there's a child that peeked around a corner down here? Uh, we haven't seen the children down here so much. It was more up in the ballroom. Mm -hmm. And that was looking from the upstairs ballroom into the hallway. And we believe that was probably Libby, uh, Libby Borman, who would have been the last child that Elizabeth Borman gave birth to. And in fact, she delivered her daughter, which was Elizabeth, Elizabeth Borman also, but they uh, dubbed her Libby. Um, she was born four days before Elizabeth Borman died. And what's ironic is that Libby and Greg Hall Borman, who was of the second marriage, both died the same day. He likely was just bef right around four years of age and Libby was just shy of six. They, did they die here at the house? Uh, I believe so. And they would have had the wake up in the ballroom. Oh, interesting. So, and the wake for Ben Borman would have also been up in the ballroom. So that's another question I had. Deaths in the house, are there any recorded deaths or that you know of? Um, well, like with Ben Borman, the thought is that he was either in the front yard on a cot or in the front porch when he died because he died of consumption. Elizabeth died actually before the house was finished here. So I can't recall which house they lived in prior to this house being built. There have been other deaths um, like Elizabeth and Ben Borman had 
two other, uh, they had three children that survived to adulthood, but they had a, a total of seven children that they had. Libby would have been the oldest of the little ones that had died, but some of them were just months old, some were maybe 18 months or something. What the cause of death, we're not sure. But you had um, diphtheria, uh, well, Spanish flu, I mean, they died before the Spanish flu era. We're guessing with uh, Greg Hall Borman, who is the, like, about four-year-old, and Libby, who is just shy of the six, probably, you know, five plus years old, we had a psychic say it had something to do with water, but it was in November, and we really don't think that they would have allowed the children to be playing outside and fall into the river. But the suspicion was possibly like a pneumonia. You know, when you think of water related and you think of water in the lungs, uh, so we're guessing that. The two children that have been seen in this house likely are Greg Hall Borman and Libby Borman. And we have had psychics say when they're up in the ballroom trying to communicate with some of the soldiers and some related to the other uh, historical artifacts that Libby, this little girl, really would like to talk to him and actually well, kind of interfere with the conversation if she could. And, you know, the psychics have said, okay, Libby, I'll talk to you in a little bit. I'm trying to talk with this individual. And she would step back. But we have caught the image of who we think is Libby. And as far as catching the actual image of Robert Hall on film, we, I can't say that anybody has, but we've had people actually have visual of him. Now, the president of our historical society, I'm kind of jealous of her because I have had my arms really, really full of things and never had anybody open the door for me. But she was gonna do some wallpaper and she had this back door that you came in to the kitchen. Actually, all of a sudden open up for her when she was struggling to reach in her pocket to get the key. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> she also, our furnace down here, she had one time, it was in June, it was plenty warm. And the furnace kept trying to kick on. Well, the furnace was off. There was no reason for it to kick on. And she said, Ben, I'm here. I'm going to do some work. Everything's OK. And then all of a sudden, it just stopped trying to kick on. Wow. Mm -hmm. So again, as far as my personal experience, I've never had anything bad or weird or unusual. I have been here when some of the investigations were going on. And I did get to visualize seeing the uh, video with who we thought was Libby. I have heard the voices. I did see the flashlight response, yes, no. And what do you call it, the dictionary box? The ovulus? Yeah, this ovulus, mm -hmm. okay. So I have observed some of those things, but for me to say I've specifically seen or interacted, I can't say that I did. Interesting. But I got to observe, what, which was an exciting thing. What would you say is the most uh, active part of the home? What well. As far as an energy of an individual, the psychics have said this is really? really, really strong here. This area? Yes. Up in the ballroom is very intense also. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> uh, because there are a lot of military artifacts and uh, the feeling that, you know, like attached to the uniforms and artifacts, um, you know, a lot of these guys gave their life, you know, so I would say that that specifically residual uh, probably up in Ben's office, but that wasn't like acknowledging us when we tried to talk to him. This was just uh, like overhearing somebody's conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, the stairs was active at the base with little uh, Greg Hall peeking around the corner, but again, that wasn't caught on video, but this one gal, Leslie, described him and it was the same description our daughter had when she was about six years old helping with the Christmas open house and saw that same little boy Rob Roy go into the closet in the upstairs bedroom which is the Mary Troy room. Wow. 
That's crazy. And, and we tried to assure, oh, I don't think there's any ghosts and stuff. And, but she would have been still at that age that is, I don't know how they say it, you know, that they're receptive and able to see things. Mm -hmm. But the description she had and her friend had was identical to our friend Leslie wow. in describing what Rob Roy was wearing. Again, that was like a plaid shirt and old type pants. Is there anything else that's happened or any place you want to visit before we end the interview? Um, no, that, that kind of covers it. The rest of it is, uh, you know, setting up shop and just seeing what you can pick up. You're right. Well, perfect. I think we're good. I Sounds think, good. Yeah. So now we're back at the beginning. We've kind of time hopped a bit, but we got the Borman house behind us. This is like we've covered extensively now, a very historic property. Now, if you remember when Rose was doing the interview with us, she was talking about some of the wainscoting and the, uh, the materials in the home, the doors were actually produced by the Borman family's lumber shop, the mill here in town. So it's almost like the Borman family not only owned and lived in the house, but they've built their energy and their, I don't wanna say their soul, but their being into the home with this wood that the family business produced. Like the fact that there have been deaths in the home, children have died, supposedly. Um, Mr. Borman maybe died out here over to the side. His wife passed before the home was even constructed. Death has seemed to kind of circle around this property, which is interesting. I wonder if the inclusion of that wood, a material that obviously just like with fire can take in energy and and absorb it very quickly if that has anything to do with why this place is so haunted and what i'm very interested in investigating I, they didn't really want to go i don't think into too much of the detail about the hell marker downstairs but i read some of the history uh, on that little piece of paper the guy uh daddy he supposedly killed up to 18 indigenous people 18 um on his revenge quest. He was actually tried in court, but he was acquitted. Um, he even says, well, we'll get back, we'll get, get into that when I go downstairs and show you guys, because he has a pretty insane quote on that piece of paper. But we're gonna begin the investigation now. It's late at night, it's chilly, it's October. It's before Halloween. Just a reminder, if you wanna see bonus content from the channel, we work very hard on the Patreon. Uh, just sign up for our Patreon, The Paranormal Files. The link is in the description of the video. Our Halloween merch is done but all of our other merch is uh, is still available for purchase, so go buy a piece of merch and support the channel. And as always, everybody, leave a like on the video, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you don't already. All of it helps a lot, and you're helping me, and you're helping this guy, too. Yeah, they are? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you, uh, everybody, really, to help Colin and, and Courtney and, and all of us, actually, to get to do this. It's, it's fun for me, and Mary's here tonight as well. Uh, like Colin said, um, piece of merch. Um, the new stuff coming out's awesome. Becoming a patron was is really cool. We I know really appreciate it. It is really costly to do all these things, um, especially to do them well, and that really does help a lot to let these uh, guys, including me, uh, come along on these things. But yeah, uh, again, I want to thank all the moderators, especially two. Uh, that that help on the live streams and just supporting the channel behind the scenes they're all awesome uh but yeah let's get to it man this is right. this is a new place head on in all right man. lead the way wow kind of some cool doors mm -hmm. stained glass is protected all right guys Hi. mary Hi. and i'll let you introduce yourself to everybody <laughs> online i'm kalina and um, you're not really a native of the town, but... No, I live about two and a half hours away. I am a native of northern Wisconsin. And you have helped us a lot 
in the series. Um, we're so happy to have you out to film with us tonight to investigate. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. And thank you for being a patron too. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Yeah, that's amazing. She's so sweet. I don't watch any other shows either. This is it. Well, that's great you to get hear. All yeah. my attention. Because well, otherwise, yeah. I'm investigating. <laughs> right. That's yeah, cool. Kalina uh, reached out initially, and then we've been communicating quite a bit, and then you got me in contact with other people, and it just kind of mushroomed from there. So yeah, really a couple of my friends really set you up well. Yeah, from Old Baraboo uh, yeah, Inn. Yeah. And, and uh, so, yeah, we really appreciate it, though, for yeah. sure. That's been really, really helpful. So. And she's got a bunch of equipment and some things that we've never used. Ooh. I what know. Oh, this you right should right tell here. them, Kalina. Tell yeah. them, like, this is like a souped-up K2. So um, I'll use my phone, take it off airplane mode. Oh, that's mm. cool. Yeah, that's yeah. very cool. Wow. Yeah, just like our, uh, a really strong K2. Very Interesting. Cool. Oh, what is the name of it here? It's a Paralite. Paralite, okay. I've never seen that that one before. That's cool. Well, I'm going to suggest we all go to the ballroom to start yeah. this off. Okay. Sounds good. So let's grab Sounds our good. stuff and uh, let's, let's go do, do we it. Have, what are we bringing? Okay. Cool. Oh, I, I missed the history of the ballroom. Yes, you did. Go off with flashlights. Hmm. I have seen it go off with flashlights. Hmm. Oh, was it the RAM or the it was RAM? Yeah. Oh, it was the RAM. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say. Um, okay, to intro this to everybody online, we're in the ballroom now. This is a um, place where gatherings were held. Obviously, it was the ballroom. Um, it's explained thoroughly in the history portion. People in this room have seen apparitions, namely uh, small children. That's This is usually. <laughs> yeah, it's the one that's near me too, mm -hmm. the weakest one, but yeah, so uh, people have seen a lot of kids in here. There's a very creepy doll over there on the bed with like glowing green eyes if you look at it with the lights on. <laughs> but um, got all sorts of EM devices, EMF set up here. We're going to do a voice recording session. I'm just going to start off. Oh. Um, to anyone here in the Borman house, my name's Colin. I'm here with my family, the friend. If you guys want to introduce yourselves. I'm Jeff. I'm Kalina. And I'm Mary. So uh, we're not here to hurt you. We have nothing but good intentions. If you would like to come out, you may have already been playing with the light. Feel free to do whatever you'd like. Um, you can talk to us, you can dance around. You can go play with these little lights, the color red, if you go touch the color red. Um, I'm just gonna ask, is there anybody here with us in the house at all? Could you let us know somehow? Silence. <laughs> is that uh, is that REM pod, Kalina? If you look out against that wall, does that light on the wall look like it's shimmering, or is that just my eyes? You know what I'm talking about. I don't see it shimmering right now at all. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna run an EVP session right here in the voice recorder. As always, just gonna set it right there. Um. Can you walk over towards these lights if you see them, whoever you are? Thank you, if that was you, can you keep doing that? Yeah, great. Small child, open their hand out that door. Is that, is she telling that? 
think that was at the bottom of the stairs, wasn't it? It was for the ballroom, and then also at the bottom of the staircase, too. I think it was both. Yeah. She mentioned that in the interview. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rose mentioned that. Um, are you a young child? Could you use your voice and tell us yes? Yeah, we're not here to hurt you, just here to, to talk with you. Uh, just let us know that you are here in any way that you want to. We'd really appreciate it. And then just let it Thank you for that, too. Lena, do you want to ask something? If there are any children here, you're welcome to come over and hold my hand. I've got a green light here. You can play with that, too. That's fine, you can come and hang on my leg if you want. child are you an adult can you walk over towards that little red ball if you're an adult come talk to us Did you used to dance up here? If there's any spirits here that used to dance. We know this was a ballroom. <laughs> Are you a boy or a girl? If you're a boy, can you walk towards that red light? Red ball? center of our circle, towards the little red ball. It's nice to meet you. We're glad you came to communicate with us. We hope you'll stay. Can you, even if you whisper it, tell us your name? We'd love to hear your name. said you could whisper your name into this little box over here it's not going to hurt you we'd really appreciate it
Do you want us to come with you to another room in the house? Can you touch that little red ball if you want us to come to another room in the house with you? Or something? Do you keep hearing that? I, I have heard that. There it goes again. Yeah. I think that's my uh, diabetes. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I had some insight a couple oh, seconds ago. That <laughs> would make sense. You've got that's good really hearing. Yeah. 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 Laser sharp hearing. That's I, right. I close my eyes so I can just concentrate. Yeah. Wow. Okay, if you're here, come out with us and play a little bit, if you would, please. We've come a long ways. We'd really like to see you, hear you. So, you hit that light. Do you want to play? If you want to play, can you hit it again? Oh, you want to play? I've got some balls you can play with. It'd be great if you could hit some other light on that forest, too. Other than the green one, there's a few other ones that can want to touch those. We have a blue bear, too. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah, we have yeah, we 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 the new one, actually. That's good. Okay. I just go run down there and grab it. Oh, I just, I got some, I got like, kind of like a, a charge. Just mm -hmm. I felt through my arms and my chest. How old are you, the person that touched that? If you are an adult, can you make those lights go off again? I think you're a child, I guess. Is that what we all kind of feel like? That's what she was, or he or she was responding to. Well, you did answer. They wanted to play. Yeah. Can you play with those balls that Kalina put on the floor? Oh. Yeah, go ahead and go over to those balls that Kalina's got. Play with the pink you light can too. Move them. Where's the K2? Looks like you're really. Oh my oh, gosh! Oh, oh, look at that. I hadn't put the no, K2 no, on the floor yet. No, you have not. No. Wow. Oh my gosh! I've got like the energy charge again. We think you're okay. Mm -hmm. There's the K2. Colin, we got a. We think we've got a child playing with us here. Really? Yep. This has been going on. Plus, clean his ball over there went, yep. went off. Look at that. Uh, oh, look at this. Seven seconds, the light will go Whoa. off if it's not being played with. Look, look at the K2. Hmm. I think uh, we got someone here. I think it wants to play with me. Uh, maybe it knows I have the boo bear. Maybe. Oh, Ooh. Look at this. I brought something for you. You <laughs> said you wanted to play. Check this out. I'm scared of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So, do you want to. Hi, I'm Boo Bunny. What's your name? <laughs> Hi, Boo Bunny. 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 Hi,
Can you tell us how old you are? Can you tell me what two plus two is? Well, it seems like you were really playing a lot there in columns downstairs. Can you come back and play a little bit more again? Are you back? Can you finish this? She did say that it could be somebody too that owned something here from like one of the soldiers. Um, yeah, soldier, um, and some of that energy from the war. Well, we'd really like to see you come back and play like you were before. Don't be afraid. We're just here to have fun with you. What's your favorite game? Is that green again? Okay, yeah, yeah, the K2 is fine. Thanks for stepping over there. Can you go stand right on top of that red ball? We can play. You just gotta tell us what you wanna play. Thank you. You wanna play with this doll? Pick them up. Just like this. Can you give this little animal a hug? Yeah, give him a hug. Good job. Do you have a brother or a sister? Can you say brother if you have a brother or sister? If you have a sister? A sister? I have a sister too, her name is Paula. What's your sister's name? Do you not want to play with the bear? Are you around that red light? You're making that other light go off, it looks like. Can you try making that other light with the red light in the middle go off more? Thank you. All I have to do is step by it. It's not gonna hurt you. Or give the teddy bear a little hug. <laughs> no, Kalina can get used to Jeff's. Uh oh, Kalina. <laughs> oh, see. Oh, look at the same age, so. Yeah. Oh, look at it. Oh, my look goodness. It. Yeah. See, they're sticking up for me, I believe. Maybe they like the activity here. <laughs> Kalina and Jeff, they like uh, they like us. Uh, <laughs> Old ones? More mature yeah. people. <laughs> I'm the mature one here, the most, most mature. <laughs> Should we go walk in that hallway and do a spirit box? So, I think it would be nice to the box. We could do the ovulus. Uh-huh. Oh, you brought the brain. Yeah. Can you bring the ovulus? Or the, the the, that's what I meant, the connect. The, the SLS? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Hey, can you come back if you're over there? It's right here. Oh, yeah? Yep, tiny. Are you here? You can show yourself. This device will let you appear just for fun.
tiny figure about the size of the window. Child size. Uh, yeah, child size, yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, even within the, the window, so. Can you reappear for me? Interesting. Oh, we got a figure in the chair, and you behind it. And me? Oh, mm -hmm. Do you want yeah. me to stay? Yeah, yeah, you're good. For yeah. Huh. Are you sitting down in the chair? It's probably warm for me sitting there. Yeah, <laughs> I might like the chair. Can you step up and stand out of the chair? Looks like it is standing on the ground. Clean like clean maybe maybe there. you could come you could come over here clean up next and back of it and back yeah right come right back of the chair okay. uh-huh yeah oh it's kind it, of it went up yeah it grabbed yeah hold, hold your hand, hand up. can you grab Kalina's hand it, 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 it's does it have oh there's another one mm -hmm. there's a little a little, little one to your I'm so glad you wow. came to play with me. Look at this. I miss little kids. My son's 18. <laughs> Over there. Where she just was standing. Yeah, where you were standing, but small. <laughs> wow, are there more of you here? Maybe you'd like to be around Kalina. You're, she's really nice. Not going to hurt you at all. I brought a lot of toys for you. More the merrier. Oh, mm -hmm. little one disappeared. This one here is cool. No, it's still there. I wonder if you... Yeah. Oh, then another one came and now it's a different color. I'm going to move over a little bit. Do you want me to brush your hair? Oh, look at it. It came down on the table. It's on the table. Next to you on the left, Kalina. Yep. Can you grab Kalina's hand on the table? Oh, it jumped back. Here? Over. Over. It's jumping from the case to the table. If you're a little girl, can you raise your hand? I'm kind of surprised how long the one in the chair is staying there, though. You know? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, God, I did not expect to. I Where literally went to look at what that noise was, and I was like, oh. Can you raise your hand up and touch Kalina's hand? Oh, you guys both unmapped. Just went. Hmm. Interesting mm -hmm. how you both disappeared, mm -hmm. isn't it? So, we've done some investigating here in the ballroom. It seems like child energy. Seems like a child. That was me. <laughs> We're gonna head out into the hallway now where uh, different adult spirits have been seen and felt. And uh, we're gonna use a spirit box now, the classic SB7. So, <laughs> let's go out there. Jeff's got the connect, as you guys have probably seen already. If there's anybody up here, we would love to talk to you. Once again, my name's Colin. I'm here with Jeff, Mary, Kalina. Yeah, if you could just say hi or hello or something, like a greeting, to let us know that you're here so we can start having a conversation, that would be awesome. <laughs> to work at a hospital in town? If you were a nurse, can you say nurse? Were you doctor? Doctor Hess? Did you work for Doctor Hess? Doctor was he? He's a weird little. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Did he do surgeries? Doctor, 
if you were abducted in the Spanish flu, what kind of symptoms did people have? It's probably like a male voice for them. Were you a doctor in this city, Boston? said yes. Let's go watch the kids Oh, yeah. That was weird. <laughs> that was an interesting sound. Like this I'm doll, I don't know who the hell would want to play with this doll as a child. That's you scary. know, that's like that's the, really one scary. of the eeriest dolls I've ever like seen. Me. It really is creepy looking. <laughs> Can you say that again, the man, whatever you said? Again? Yeah, say it again. Can you tell me your name, whoever's in here? Are you a man? Are you a woman? A lady. <laughs> yeah, and then plus the other one's voice. <laughs> Can you tell me your name? <laughs> lady. <laughs> Do you know any of our names that are in the room right now? Colin. Colin? What? Colin. Colin. You know, Colin. I mean, they, they were English or British, the people that came here. Really? Yeah. And had slight Were you trying accent. to say Colin? Can you say it again? How many people are here with us in the house? Or children, adults, how many spirits are here? Sound like happy. Mm -hmm. Or what'd you hear? I just heard yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think so. Are you you're happy here? Can you tell us again? Mm -hmm. Male now. I'm gonna hear that one in audio for sure. Yeah. How about the female that's here that, that said you're happy? W? Are all the spirits in this house good spirits? Is everybody here nice? I have to play it back. I thought I heard it. Yeah. Tell us if it's day or night. Do you know if it's day or night right now? Give me crack. <laughs> what did it say? I don't know. I, I heard. Give me crack. <laughs> I want to know for any spirits that are in here, why why are you still in this place? What makes you want to stay here? Yeah. 
you know what I'm going to wait again? Okay, can you tell us how many of you are here? Many? Are you guys happy here? There's some being warm. <laughs> really? Really? Oh, that's not that. Um, I got a question. Do you have anything to do with all this human hair? That's like that ear. <laughs> that one's creepy. <laughs> that one's creepy. I don't like that one. Cut. Cut? Cut as well, maybe. Cut the hair? Maybe. Does this hair belong to you? If there's many of you here, can just one of you say yes? Almost heard a yes. Can you say it again? Just yes? Does anybody know whose hair this belongs to? Can you say their name? Are there any spirits in the closet right now? In here? Kind of creepy, whatever. Yeah. Huh. Should Colin go in that closet? Yes. <laughs> I'll ask one more time, should Colin go in that closet? Do you want me to come in the closet? <laughs> I think you should go. Almost like it's a fun play it back. Attic? Attic? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think they have an attic here. Well, they have that little... Yeah, they do. They have that in the office. Who's in the attic? Oh, this goes through there. I'm coming in here, by the way. You know what this reminded me of? I was going to say earlier. What? Insidious. Ew. You remember? Oh, yeah. A little kid in Insidious who's dancing in the window. Yeah. What are these things in here that you wear? What are they called? What are these called in here? That you wear. If that, if, you, if that was a yes, tell me a piece of clothing that you wore here. What color is this dress? <laughs> Can you tell us what color that dress is again? This one? What color is that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a great sea foam. Yeah. This one's more blue. Yeah. What? <laughs> Black. <laughs> well, maybe you can't see the colors. You're just guessing, huh? What is this called right here? What's this called? Right there. I heard that at the end. They have to play that back. Push down. I feel like energy again. What's the matter? I feel like a jaw spasm. Really? Not like too much caffeine. You okay? Yeah. I just like yawned and I had like a. Harley horse, like a jaw spasm. Ouch. Like literally shooting pain through my feet. It's, it's like I can feel my muscle twitching. Maybe I need the doctor. Is the doctor in? Yeah. Colin needs help. Is that a cramp? Yeah. yeah. Work it literally, it's like. Oh. I, I wish we could play it back. 
Can you can you say that again? Oh, it's really painful. Mm. Did you make Colin's jaw hurt? Okay. Yeah, that just really hurt. Wow. I don't know if I'm dehydrated or I literally just said like my muscle like twisting oh. and I can feel it like twitching like <laughs> oh, still is like hurts right here. Do you wanna go down and get some water? Yeah. Let me go into the basement. Why don't we just sit up here for like five minutes and okay. just listen? Okay. Because I'd like to just do no devices for a second, just see sure. if we can hear I love anything. my favorite is EVPs disembodied right. on the recorder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why don't do you we just have sit your... in the hallway and just... I'll grab my recorder yeah. and yeah. Okay. put it over here. Do, do you need the light sit here? Yeah. Okay. Whatever, I'll be fine. You I okay? should sit here. <laughs> Look, I scratched myself on that. When I fell on the steps. Oh, yeah, I've all, got some cat balls here. Yeah. Falling apart. Okay. I'll remember those. <laughs> <laughs> remember those? Mm -hmm. Come here. Oh. You want me to move it? Just <laughs> sure. You don't have to put the head on tape. <laughs> That's funny. I love you. I noticed that in the episodes. <laughs> yeah. That it was our, our one downstairs was our new one. Um, are any of the Bormans here with us? Did you knock on something? That? Come walk over here? Mr. Borman, if you're here, did you build any other houses besides this house? If you did, can you tell us what city? You built another house in? I don't know why, but I'm really kind of a little disoriented up here. I don't know if it's the lighting or what. Was this the doctor's sleeping area? No, he never even lived here. Never even lived here. No, and they have his just old the office out it. back. Yeah, okay. and gotcha. he like was part of the histo something with the historical society, so they mm -hmm. turned this into the room for him. Donated blood or something. Did you die in here? Yeah, I will say I when I first sat down right here. I felt cold and I like checked over here for like an air vent. Mm -hmm. I didn't see anything or feel anything, but like I'm getting like cold here, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like my leg right here is like cold and my arms, I think I have like goosebumps. Mm -hmm. For the first time all night, it's like the hallway. It's not even near a window. Is there someone standing behind Colin? There's definitely cold here, you know, I think it's just colder over here in this room. It's weird though, because when we were in there, I didn't feel cold. I think it's facing yeah. the... What is that way? Is that north? I don't even know. It's like weird because it's like, I don't feel like, like my body isn't cold. It's like my arm is cold and then my leg, but this side is completely fine. It's like, what is that if the colds come in? Is there just yeah. like a... Mm -hmm. This is where the heat starts. I think if you feel my back, it feels cold. Hmm. It's interesting as well how both REM pods are silent. You know, in the other room, yeah. there really was going off a lot. Maybe it's bedtime. If the kids are still here, do you still want to play? Can you move something up here? to make a noise for us, or make a sound. God, it is so quiet. Because mm -hmm. they, they don't have air conditioning here, do they? Mm -hmm. no. Well, they have just the furnace, but it's turned off. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. but it's off. 
Mm-hmm. It's usually in a building that you know, there's like a hum or something. Yeah. This is like straight up just. This is a really silent. hard home for me to feel out. You know, like I didn't, ha- I didn't get any of the history, obviously, of this place, but really isn't that much to know. Is there though? Well, this is none of its original, is it? Or some of it is. Some of it. So it's a piece. hodgepodge of things. Like you said, the doctor stuff. Multiple kids died here, though. Multiple? They did. Mm-hmm. They did. Oh, they did. Their family. I think they lost four oh. out of the seven kids. The Mormon family? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. And the first, when he built it, he died either on the lawn or to the side of the house. Or maybe in that fainting room. Yeah, or maybe mm-hmm. in the room. TV room. Then mm-hmm. his wife died before the house was finished. I feel a lot of, like, my throat and my chest is like, <coughs> you know, like tight. Hmm. I mean, was it, did they, was it like influenza or anything like that? Or? Consumption, mm-hmm. tuberculosis. Really? Yeah, that's how he died. He died. Tuberculosis. Of TB? Yeah. Wow. And Maybe then you'd say that. <coughs> yeah, it's kind of mm-hmm. like, I feel like my throat, my lung, my chest right here. They didn't really know how the kids died. Who, Maybe who died? Diphtheria. Yeah. John? Mm-hmm. Did you, uh, did you have tuberculosis consumption? Does this remind you of anything? Can you make a noise in the room that you're in? Just let us know where you are. We can come to you. It's kind of weird. I kind of feel kind of really crappy, you know, with this. And I have a headache now. Like I feel like I'm almost I have the flu. I don't. But. Hmm. Well, I straight up just had a. Jaw spasm in the other room, <laughs> which is weird timing. I don't know, last time that happened to me, it was like so much pain that it was like my vision went like white for a second, like, ah, <laughs> crazy. Because it, it, yeah, like a an actual spasm, like just tight. Yeah, like my muscle, I could put my finger up to my yeah muscle and I could literally feel it going, mm. like shaking. Yeah. I've had twisting. That, I've had that with my neck muscle before, you know. Mm-hmm. That could be just any kind of a, a spasm that locks can be just really painful. Like a trolley horse, yeah, basically, trolley is what so, I yeah. describe it as. But <laughs> in your jaw, just, mm. just a terrible sentence. There's a lot of lymph nodes in your jaw, too. My son just had one swell up really big in mm. his jaw. Mm. Fun. <laughs> yeah. I have a permanently swollen lymph node in my neck, though. Well, that would probably cause some problems. Mm-hmm. Well, I, what happened? It's like strep throat or something and just never really went down. Oh, that's mm. a little. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> Strangely enough, I, I feel better, actually, too. Oh, my. I heard about how much pain I was in. I think so, yeah. Pain goes away. I think I might be. I'm feeling like a lot lighter. Are any of the Bormans here? Um, Well, I kind of want to go do the... Basement? Yeah, but I want to do it alone. Hey guys, so I'm down here alone at the Hell's Delight marker. Now you guys know that I like to do alone stuff. Um, I feel like this place is too small to have a, a big group of people and I wanted to try connect with this darkness that's supposedly down here in this corner. Back in the tour that we received, 
this wasn't covered, this history. And I'm just going to read this to you guys because this is unbelievably brutal. So here's what the history says. On Highway 80, about six miles this side of New Lipson, is a small marker put up by Gus Mooney. It marks the site of the old Salter cabin where Mrs. George Salter was murdered by the Indians on July 13th, 1863. Her husband, commonly known as Daddy Seltzer, was working in a field three miles from home when a man on horseback came and told of the tragedy. When he got home, he found a great crowd of people standing around. Amongst them was the sheriff who had a drunken Indian in custody. He had been about to take him to jail when Mr. Salter arrived. Gus Nooney suggested that Daddy be allowed to see the Indian in case he knew him, and not content with merely looking, he got the Indian down and was kicking him when some, someone intervened. Salter broke away and went into the cabin and got the axe handle which had been used in killing his wife and started after the Indian again. The sheriff grabbed him but George Birch said that he had a right to do as he pleased with the Indian and that he himself would shoot anyone who tried to interfere. So daddy polished off the Indian with the axe handle and then they wondered what they should do with the rest of the body. One of the neighbors, John Miller, cut the Indian's head off and they put it on a 10 foot pole and stuck it in the middle of the road. The next day, as some of the people were going home, they met an Indian who said he was looking for his brother, John. George Carter told him that Mr. Salter wanted to see him, and he went back with him to the cabin. When the Indian saw the head on the pole planted in the middle of the road, he refused to go any farther, but Carter grabbed him and dragged him to the house. There, the Indian grabbed a rifle and shot at the men, but missed them. Salter used the axe handle effect effectively, and another Indian had paid for Mrs. Salter's death. Mr. Salter himself claimed that through the years he killed 18 of them with a rifle he named Black Hawk. He was arrested for killing the first two Indians and taken to Milwaukee but later was released from custody because no jury could be found who would convict him. The case was before the courts for four years. Following the death of Mr. Mrs. Salter, there was a great excitement at New Lipson and a company of soldiers was stationed there for a time. Many of the citizens were in mortal terror for weeks, fearing a massacre. Daddy Salter kept a resort there during the Civil War years called Hell's Delight, and it is so the marker is inscribed. He furnished meals and lodgings to those passengers who were traveling from New Libson to Wasau, Grand Rapids, and Stevens Point, and the rest of Wisconsin. All were made welcome at Salter's where they found food and rest. So that's like unbelievably brutal and messed up. Uh, I guess uh, this guy did not care for um, the typical systems of justice in America. This was like frontier justice for him, even though, you know, I personally reading this highly, and I'm getting chills reading that right now. Up, up and down my arms, I feel very cold and my hair is like raising as I'm reading that out loud. That's creepy. Yeah, this is like, and then here's what the other one says. He and his wife sailed from Liverpool for America in 1852. They settled in Wisconsin where he married Emma Cowkett. She was murdered by the Indians in the town. In 1863, the murder weapon was an ax. In reprisal, Daddy used the same ax to dispatch Joe and Jim Dandy to an early visit to the Happy Hunting Grounds, which is, I think, just a very crude way of saying he murdered them. Daddy built his house. They erected a slab showing where the home was. Daddy operated a tavern. He chose to name it Hell's Delight. It had been estimated that Daddy Salter sent as many as 18 Indians to the Happy Hunting Grounds. We think this is largely myth, but certain it is that he accounted for the two who killed his wife. And then listen to this. This is, this is insane. So talking about his family. Daddy was good to his family and kind to his neighbors. His tavern was a rendezvous for deer hunters, and he entertained them royally. His family gave concerts. These concerts were never complete without their bear dance interpretation. The tavern burned around 1889, and Daddy passed away early in the present century. This colorful character did not believe in a supreme being. And this is a quote from him. But if I am mistaken, and there is a hereafter, it does not matter where I go as long as there are no Indians. <laughs> is that not insane? So here is the, man, it is, I don't know if you can see my arm, but it is like really cold all of a sudden. Hell's Delight. That's the, this is the marker from his tavern called Hell's Delight. Daddy Salter. Um, you can see there is a massive spider right here. I also want to point out they never covered this. This is really interesting. Right next to it is this thing called mystery painting. Unknown artist, painting unsigned, unknown donor, no records available. And this whole thing is talking about what people have noticed in this painting and 
what it might mean. They don't know if the artist was a man or a woman. Yeah, it's from like the 1800s, this big painting. What do you guys think that this means online? Do you have any interpretation? They don't know where it came from, who painted it, but... Here's a little shot of it. Strange, right? I'm gonna turn on the REM pod. Ice. Numbers. Ice. Numbers. Shot. Shot? No. <laughs> Look at He shot and killed them with a the rifle he named Blackhawk. Shot. It just popped up. Shot. Numbers. Shot 18. Ice. I guess that's kind of the opposite of hell, but he had a, a bar. Muddy rhythm. Muddy rhythm. Clean record. Clean record? Clean record? Maybe? He had a clean record other than that? Seemed like a nice guy to people that England. met him? England! No f***ing way! No f***ing way! Race. Uh, yeah, he seemed to be a racist guy, yeah. He didn't like uh, indigenous peoples, he didn't like that race. He literally says here that, first of all, he sailed from Liverpool. He was born in England, right here. Daddy Salter, born in the county of Wits, England, just said England, and race, his thing, his final, some of his words, he doesn't believe in heaven, but he's fine going there as long as there are no Indians. I hate really saying that, but I'm just reading this text here. That is bizarre, dude. Okay, well, I'm gonna... Okay. Beast. Beast. Hell's delight. Beast. Hell's delight, everybody. Beast. Monarchy. That's an indigenous thing. Monarchy. Dude, this thing is like hitting right now. Who's? Who's? Who's boy? Who's boy? Okay, well, this is um, this is tricky. Who's? Who's? Boy. Who's boy? Okay, well this thing's going off, so um... darkness down here by myself. Daddy Seltzer, Daddy Salter, if you're here with me, Elizabeth Cowkit. I don't know. 
I don't know who Kim was. I will say though, it got way colder. What the f? Huh. Stood. There goes my voice recorder. Look at that. It just died. My voice recorder just died. This is was charged fully when we brought it here. Low battery. Thing just died. Clock. Spirit. Huh. Worry. Stood, alter, clock, spirit, worry? Dude, I have no idea. If you guys can make sense of any of this, let me know. Are you down here with me right now? Um, I got a question for you. Did you enjoy killing? If you're here, did you enjoy murder and killing? Did you like taking people's lives? Wicked. Did you feel like a bad person when you killed these people? Yeah. How did killing make you feel? How did killing make you feel, Daddy? What was the name of your bar? What was the name of your bar? Your tavern, Daddy. It was two words. Can you tell me one of the words that you named your tavern? One of them? How did you kill the people that you kill? Sign that he killed a drunken uh, indigenous person. Drunk. Why did you kill the people that you killed? 
Fate? Why'd you kill them? Fate? Do you believe that was their fate to die? They chose it. They chose it. They chose it. I, I honestly feel like this daddy guy is standing like behind me. This is just to remind you guys, pitch black. I just heard movement right here. Hello? Daddy Salter, can you just tell me how many people did you murder? Last chance. Do you feel bad for what you did to those people, Daddy Salter? I feel like he was here, but now I feel like he's gone. Well, guys, this has been interesting. Uh, this episode isn't over yet, but uh, it's very late at night. We've had a long day. We drove from South Dakota to Wisconsin this morning. We got up at 7.15 in the morning and drove six and a half hours here. Did the interviews, shot everything, investigated. So. We're going to call it a night, but me and Daddy Salter and this atrocious act that he committed, truly just a brutal, according to him, series of crimes and uh, unwarranted murders, uh, needs to be addressed. So, um, Daddy Salter, you can follow me, man. Uh, let's have a talk. But for tonight, let's call on here, and we're going to end it here. The fuck, the moment I stopped, the moment I paused, look at that. Daddy, is that you? No way, dude. Look, I have goosebumps all up and down my body. Oh. Holy shit, man, can you see those? Look at my goosebumps, my hair standing on end. Straight up goosebumps all of a sudden. Was that you? You saying this isn't over? <laughs> no way, dude! No! Okay, you're not welcome. You gotta leave. That is fucking insane, guys. Can you believe that? <laughs> Are you still pissed off about what happened to you? Are you proud that you killed all those people? <gasps> oh my God! No! What the hell did I just... Would you kill again if you were given the chance? Oh my god! No fucking way! Oh my god, this dude is really evil, man! Um, will you follow me? If I wanna meet you? <laughs> what the hell, dude? He's really easy. This dude's gonna follow me. Um, if you follow me out near New Lipson to the old Salter cabin, if really, you're going to be there, you're going to follow me out there. Well, I did not expect that ending. I literally just was going to pack this stuff up and you guys just watched that entire shot. This REM pod didn't beep once. So, yeah. So, Daddy Salter, what you're saying is if I come out to your cabin, you'll meet me out there? Well, shit, I guess that's... Wish I had more time here, but our time's up, so, uh...
Yeah, follow me out to Highway 60 to where you where your wife died, and where those first other murders took place. Let's uh, let's have a chat there. Okay, guys. Good night. Creepy ending, I guess. All right, everybody, so we did the Daddy Salter investigation. We were there at the Borman house the other night, and now we've come to the place where Daddy Salter himself uh, actually unjustly slaughtered those two indigenous men. And apparently he buried their remains in the road, so their skeletons are right here in the road which is incredibly bizarre that i couldn't find any accounts of uh of the skeletons or the bodies being recovered they are uh, allegedly right here being driven over hundreds thousands of times a day so it says Mrs. Salter killed here by the Indians June 13th, 1863. Two Indians, Jim Joe and Jim Dandy, killed by Salter, then buried here. This axe handle killed two Indians and Mrs. Salter. And Mrs. Salter. Muckagee or something. I can't remember. I can't see what that says. That's crazy that this is an imprint of a murder weapon. Oh my gosh, I didn't right here. see that. That's weird. And yeah, and they're, the two indigenous people were buried right here in the road, it says. Right there. Well, so here on the channel, we always like to respect, Jesus. we like to respect the dead. This time, these two uh, indigenous guys were unfairly murdered. There was no trial, there was no evidence. They were just basically found and, and beaten to death with this ax handle right here in this area and buried right here. I'm assuming that their skeletons are still under the road. And yeah, some of the history that I was reading seemed to skew towards this Daddy Salter guy being a, a really good guy. It says in the paper how nice he was to his family, blah, blah, but he murdered two people without you know, trial or any evidence really in, in a brutal way and they cut their head off and stuck it right here in the road. So, we actually came today, we just stopped and got some tobacco, some uh, just regular pipe tobacco. We got the REM pod. We're gonna build a little mini fire over here and, uh, and light some tobacco for the indigenous people that this guy um, sent to the grave, so. Yeah. So I wonder, I wonder if they actually, oh. REM pod right there. Oh, that was oh. close. Ooh. It's interesting. What I was wondering is if they actually buried the ax somewhere around here, like the murder weapon or, yeah, those two bodies that were lost. Ram pod. Ram pod's going off, Colin. Really? Yeah. you guys who were unfairly killed this uh, this offering is for you guys yeah I'm not a master fire starter to anyone online
Where's the run pod? Weird. There we go. Okay. Oh. No, don't smother it. Okay. This is for the men who were murdered here. Huh. May you all rest in peace to the victims who were murdered here. I'm leaving this tobacco as an offering to you all. You guys find peace. I also want to state that we're leaving this tribute to Mrs. Salter as well. She was an innocent party in this, who was brutally murdered in her bed, either behind here or right here in the area that we're standing in so many years ago. But uh, this is the end of our journey here, everybody. And uh, hopefully these spirits can find peace, especially to the two indigenous spirits and Mrs. Salter. I hope this helped a little bit. I'm gonna leave a little bit of tobacco right here by the memorial too. for the indigenous guys that were killed here. <laughs> Strange. Mm -hmm. That's really strange.